Hey guys, how's it going? Sray here. Today I want to talk about our good friend Artanis. So as you may know, Artanis is a hero that has been widely considered bad by mostly at least high level community. And I feel like most of that is pretty much justified. However, he has recently received quite a few changes and this has made him really, really strong to the point of where he's pretty much perma permanently banned in HGC or picked, uh, at least in North America. So Artanis, how good is he? He's really, really good right now. Like, if you're not picking him, if you're not playing him, if you're not banning him, you should. And I think the win rates kind of reflect that. So let's talk about why that is. So Artanis is a brawly kind of bruiser um, melee hero who is cannot be played as a solo tank, and you should play him with at least one other kind of tanky hero or initiator on your team. Um, he's not going to be able to peel, but what he does does is get in the enemy's face and stay there. So not only is he difficult to kill, he's also sticks to targets fairly well now. The big issue in the past with Artanis is that he just doesn't he's not a threat because he doesn't he wasn't able to stick to targets. But for a couple of reasons he is a threat now. So the number one reason he's a threat now is we'll talk about his abilities in a moment, but the number one reason is that you can use phase prism with blade dash now. And that basically makes it so that you can you're basically a stitches with Artanis. So with, st with Stitches, you can obviously hook a target way out of position um, or from a position where they were safe and then hook them into your team to a position where you can easily kill them. And Artanis essentially does the same thing, uh, except he has basically Fishing Hook at level 1 and you can completely knock a hero out of position and you still won't die because you're too tanky to die. So not only can, does he have the utility of Stitches Hook, he also contributes more to team fights because his ult is more effective, he does more damage, and he's just more of a threat. So let's go over his kit really quickly. Let's start with his passive, which is Shield Overload. If you take damage while below 75% health, you gain a shield for 5 seconds, and your basic attacks lower the cooldown of Shield Overload by 4 seconds. So basically, as soon as you drop below 75% health, you gain the shield, and you just auto attack stuff, and it reduces the cooldown of the shield. Um, so the shield. While 822 looks like a pretty large amount, we are level 20, so the shield isn't an insane amount, but it is a significant amount to the point where uh, you have to be aware of it if you're on the enemy team, because if you're not doing enough burst damage to Artanis, he's going to be able to sustain your damage with shield overload, because he can get the cooldown off fairly quickly, especially with his abilities and some additional talents. So his Q is Blade Dash, and basically dash forward, dealing damage, and then return dealing even more damage. And every enemy you hit, both on the way there and the way back, will reduce the cooldown. Normal enemies hit, uh, reduce the cooldown by one second for shield overload, and if you hit a hero, it reduces the cooldown by two seconds. So if you hit a single stationary hero, hero you will reduce the cooldown of shield overload by four seconds, because you can hit them on the way there and on the way back. This is basically just the ability. You can use it over walls, over over terrain, you pass right through. You can see that I can hit these um, those ogres, but you do return um, back every time. So this is your main wave clear ability, and you basically, you, you're definitely going to use it with phase prism for the utility of swaps. Uh, you can also use it in fights, just if you can hit a lot of heroes, you can significantly reduce the cooldown of shield overload. And you can also be interrupted when casting, so you're not unstoppable. So if you, if you queue in into a root or something, uh, you're going to be rooted and you're going to stop shield uh, blade dash. If you get Tychus grenaded, if you get stunned, if you get silenced, um, you'll also be stopped as well. Actually, I'm not sure about silence. Don't, don't quote me on that one. Um, but if you get stunned or rooted, you'll definitely stop while casting. So you can also obviously cast through enemy gates. You can see here, when my health drops below 75% health, I will gain shield overload. And then it goes on cooldown. Um, so his W is Twin Blades. And Artanis' next basic attack immediately causes him to charge a short distance and strike the target uh, two times. So when I activate it, you'll see that I have a little bit of a radius around me, and that means if I go within that radius and attack a target, I will dash a short distance, or rather Artanis will. So you can also use this as an auto attack reset. So you can see when I auto attack, if I use it right after an auto attack, I'll be able to get, get it, it'll immediately attack. So I can get an auto attack refresh, because this is an it's auto attack refresh, um, auto attack animation refresh ability. So if I use it at the end of an auto animation, you see I won't get as much value then as if I attack right after. 
So try to use this to gain a little bit more burst damage when playing Artanis. When playing Artanis. It doesn't look like too much, but you'll definitely feel it in-game, especially once you've played Artanis a bit more. Uh, you can also walk away when using Twin Blades, so you don't have to stand directly beside the target. So you can see that I can attack and walk away at the same time, and the attacks will finish going. However, if you Twin Blades and then you um, Blade Dash fast enough, the ability will get cancelled uh, sometimes, especially if you get Triple Strike at level 13. Artanis' last basic ability is Phase Prism, and this is pretty much, um, at least right now, is the main part of his kit. And this is because it is an extremely influential ability in the game, and you will see why here. So what it does is it fires a short Phase Prism that deals some damage, and it hits when it hits the first enemy hero, um, it swaps Artanis' position with theirs, and you can use it during Blade Dash. So you can see that it swaps the position and does a bit of damage. So this has a lot of implications, um, especially when used with Blade Dash. So you can see that I can cast it when using Blade Dash. So if I cast it on while using Blade Dash, you can see that I can swap positions. And there's a, a little bit more intricacy to using this ability. So you can see that if I if I uh, swap here, and if I use it really early, okay, of course it'll dodge. If I use it really early, you can see that I don't really swap much distance at all. So what I want to do is when I swap, I want to hold this. I want to hold Phase Prism as long as possible until I'm on my way back. So Phase Prism won't move with your momentum; it has its own momentum. So what I mean, what I mean by that is that you can see that the ability still goes quite far, even though I'm all the way over here. So when I Q here, if you hold, if you hold um, the Phase Prism a little bit onto your way back, you'll swap them all the way back, and you can get significantly more distance this way. So I wait until I'm walking back a little bit, and you can get a lot more distance than if you go you immediately E. So you want to hold the E as long as you can. If you don't want to do this, you want to swap all the way back, and you can swap them considerably more distance. So that's the first type of swap you can do. There's two swaps. This other swap you can do is you want to dash first, first and then immediately, like right immediately, cast Phase Prism. You dash if you're standing adjacent to a target it looks like this and you can swap them in that way so you blade dash away and you immediately swap with phase prism so this one can take a little bit of time to learn uh, if you use quick cast it might help you because you have to cast it very quickly if i delay even a moment if i delay even a moment here you can see it won't catch them you have to you have to cast it immediately um, and this can be quite useful so let me turn on minions here and i can swap arthas bot So, see that I can, I can do things like this and, and swap people over walls. Um, so it has a lot of uses. Um, so the, the first, again, the first way you want to use Phase Prism is you want to use it to kind of catch heroes out of position. You can swap them all the way into your team. And the second way you want to use it is if, let's say my teams are, are all the way on the left here, I can swap, I can swap Arthas all the way into my team. And he'll be right out of position and you can blade dash our twin blades right into him so you can see that that is an absolute terror uh if you're kind of a squishy hero so if say that you're a Li ming or you're a vala or you're a um a medic or something and you get and you get swapped with phase prism you're pretty much dead uh it's basically on a 16 second cooldown you could die at any time and it's not ignored by terrain it goes through heroes or it goes through minions um it goes through a lot of things and um, it also isn't blocked by by wall. So if I try to swap a hero into into my 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 structures, so let's say that Arthas is right outside my gate here. Uh, it'll take too long for him to come up. But let's say Arthas is right here. He won't swap in. So if I swap with him right here, so let's say he's right in front, and I swap right here, I will come out front out in front of the gate, but he will not go into our fort. So you can't swap people behind your walls. However, you can swap against the enemy team. So let's say that Arthas is uh, right behind this wall here. See if I can find him. Okay, I'm not doing it there properly. Let's try this one. Okay, you can swap. You can swap out like this, uh, but you won't be able to do it if um, you you can't do it for your own structures, but you can do it for enemy structures. Okay, so that's enough swapping around. So let's go over talent builds. So Artanis has fairly standard talents. Um, at level 1 we have reactive reactive parry, amateur opponent, and season marksman. 
So reactive parry, every time you activate twin blades, you gain a charge of block, which uh, reduces the, the damage of the next basic attack. Uh, so this is basically like a really shitty block, because not only is it, um, it it's, it's active slightly more often than normal block. Block is a 5 second cooldown, and this is a 4 second cooldown, but you have to actually hit the target with twin blades. Um, but it's also only 50% damage reduction instead of 75% damage reduction. Amateur opponent, um, Twin Blades attacks deal 100%, 150% bonus damage to non-heroes. Uh, this is a really strong option. And remember, non-heroes means structures as well. So you also deal, your, your, your W do consist, considerably more damage to structures. So if I attack this wall here, and then I use Amateur Opponent, you see it does a huge amount of damage, and that's really useful for sieging. Uh, you can clear minions a bit more effectively, but even more importantly, you can use it on objectives. So you, uh, Amateur Opponent is really effective on Battlefield of Eternity, on the Immortal. It's really effective on, on Infernal Shrines. It's really effective on Tomb of the Spider Queen to clear or to push. And it's really effective to jungle. So if I'm trying to kill these Ogres, uh, you can clear them much more effectively if you have Amateur Opponent. Um, you can almost not even jungle if you don't have Amateur Opponent. Uh, it also helps to race bosses down uh, with your team and any other kind of PvE uh, thing. So even though it doesn't work versus heroes, which would be too, way too insane, it does work versus uh, a lot of different things you might not have thought about, and it's a very, very strong option, and the option you want to take most of the time. So I would pretty much never uh, recommend going reactive parry. The other option is you have Season Marksman, and every time you're near a minion uh, that's been killed, you grant granted 0.2 attack damage, and t if you get a hero takedown, you're granted 0.5 attack damage. Upon reaching 40 bonus attack damage, you also activate uh, Season you can also activate Season Marksman, which increases your attack speed by 40% for 3 seconds. So this is obviously really, really, really strong when it's stacked up. However, it's very difficult to stack up, and on some maps, you pretty much can just not stack it up. So on Braxis Holdout, on Battle of Eternity, those two lane maps, um, Haunted Mines, you just you can't stack Season Marksman because uh, it just there's not enough minions in the map, and it takes too long. So I would take Season Marksman on Rotation Babes maps, so on Infernal Shrines, on Tomb of the Spider Queen, on Dragonshire, maps like that where you're constantly rotating and you're constantly soaking uh, minions that are dying around you, you can stack Season Marksman pretty effectively. Uh, on every other map, uh, or non-rotation based map, I would take Amateur Opponent. I think it's just really, really strong. Uh, it lets you do a lot on Artanis, and I, like, I would absolutely take it on some maps like uh, Battlefield of Eternity. I don't think there's even any question. At level 4, we have Sonic Energy, or Sonic Synergy, sorry, which increases Blade Dash's cooldown reduction of Shield Overload by hitting heroes by 2 seconds. So it increases this bonus from 2 seconds to 4 seconds. So you can reduce the cooldown of Shield Overload by a total of 8 seconds if you hit them on the way there and on the way back. Uh, shield Battery, Shield Overload, cooldowns recharges 50% faster while its shield is active, and the shield duration is increased by 1 second. And Shield Surge, which increases the Shield Overload overloads cooldowns or shields by 80% while below 25% health. So Sonic Synergy is much better than Shield Battery if we're just looking at Shield um, cooldowns or recharges. So the problem with Shield Battery is the cooldown is 24 seconds. So if you have a 50% faster cooldown charge, that's still really, really long. And remember, you're going to be gaining, uh, you're going to be reducing the cooldown of Shield Overload um, by four seconds every time you attack. So the vast, vast, vast majority of the cooldown from Shield Overload is being reduced by your auto attacks. It's not just sitting down and timing out. Uh, so you're not really going to get any value from this because your auto attacks will reduce the cooldown too, um, too quickly. You might get like a, a few seconds, a couple seconds worth um, from this talent, and that you still have to have the shield active. So not only is the cooldown really long for this, so 50% recharge rate isn't that much faster, uh, but the shield is just going to be destroyed pretty much instantly almost every time because it doesn't shield you for that much um, in regards to your maximum health. So since it's only it's only active while your shield is active, you're not really going to have get gain any benefit to this at all. So Sonic Synergy will actually considerably reduce the cooldown of your um, shield overload. However, it's not really um, too clutch or going to save you that often. Um, by hitting a lot of targets with this, since you'll be auto attacking anyway, uh, you're, I think you're just better off going sh shield surge, which significantly increases the cooldown or the shield generation of shield overload by 80%. That is a huge amount, um, and your shields will actually be impactful. Uh, it'll also bait a lot of heroes when they're trying to kill you because you get really low 25% health and they want to kill you. 
um, and you can keep fighting. And just having this is far more effective, uh, especially once you get low, than Sonic Synergy is, in my opinion. So I think you should always go Shield Surge at level 4. Although, if the enemy team does have like some like Vikings or something, you might be able to get value from Sonic Synergy. Okay, so at level 7, we have Solarite Reaper. Increases the damage of the first Blade Dash by 150%, so it basically makes it the same damage as the return damage for Blade Dash. Warp Sickness, Base Prism slows enemy movement speed by 35% for 4 seconds. Chrono Surge, uh, hitting an enemy hero with Base Prism grants 50% attack speed for 4 seconds, and Follow Through, which after using the ability, your next base attack does 40% additional damage. So Sol Solarite Reaper, it just does more damage. Um, that's whatever, not very good. Uh, if you want more damage, if you just want raw more damage, it's better to go follow through than Solarite Reaper. I mean, Artanis isn't really an AoE hero, so having more AoE damage doesn't really matter. It's better to have more single target damage. Um, but I, mean, I wouldn't recommend either of those. Warp Sickness is extremely strong. So a 35% slow um, that doesn't decay for four seconds. A four second slow is really long. But that doesn't decay for four seconds uh, is extremely strong. And if you're not getting this, I recommend getting it and trying it because you will notice a huge difference. Imagine you you swap uh, an enemy hero right into your team. Let's see if I can swap properly here. You swap that hero right into the team, and then they're also slowed. And they're slowed for four seconds, so they're not going to go anywhere. Um, that is extremely, extremely powerful. The attack speed crown surge is actually really strong as well. 50% bonus attack speed is quite a lot, especially for a hero that synergizes so well with attack speed. Um, I would get Chrono Surge if your your team already has a lot of CC or a lot of slows. So I'm talking like two, three, four slows or CCs where Warp Sickness will just be redundant. and You don't need the additional slow. So if you're in that case, I would get Shield or Chrono Surge. Your two heroics are Suppression Pulse and Purifier Beam. So let's have a look at both. So Purifier Beam, uh, you summon, they're both unlimited range, and with Purifier Beam, you summon a beam that does damage every second and follows the target around for eight seconds. Uh, so it basically just looks like this. And you can see if I move the target, uh, it'll follow them, but it's significantly slower than movement speed. Uh, so you can easily run away from it. So let's see if I cast this again here. You can see that I'll just swap out a little bit. So if I walk, you can see that I'm a lot faster than the beam is itself. So you can never really be caught out by it if you just run in a straight line. So if you're going to hit a target with Purifier Beam, they need to be slowed or CC'd or not moving for whatever reason. Otherwise, you're not going to get value from Purifier Beam. Um, the other ultimate you have here is Suppression Pulse. And Suppression Pulse, you can cast uh, anywhere on the map as well. It's a global and looks like this. It grants vision, does a little bit of damage, and blinds all enemies hit, including heroes, for 4 seconds. So this may sound kind of crappy compared to Purifier Beam, but believe me, it is the better option the vast majority of time. So if Purifier Beam you know, has some synergy, especially with Warp Sickness, where you can slow the target, and then you can cast Purifier Beam and they can't run away, and that'll usually secure a kill on a Squishy. But the vast majority of the time, you're going to get way more value out of Suppression Pulse, especially since they only have 50 second cooldown versus Purifier Beam, which is an 80 second cooldown. Um, while if the beam is constantly hitting, it does a lot of damage. You can see that it does 403 damage per second, and Suppression Pulse only does 250 damage once. It does way more damage than Suppression Pulse. It's also an AoE if there's targets stacking for whatever reason. But you're gonna get more damage, more value from Suppression Pulse because you're basically gonna look for a swap, swap them, and then they'll be swapped to your team and use Suppression Pulse while you're fighting the enemy team. Uh, you can also Suppression Pulse um, anywhere on the map to save allies, or you can Suppression Pulse to defend, to push. It grants a vision. You can use it on Battlefield of Eternity to blind the enemy team. So you can get, you can race faster or have a better chance at racing. You can blind people um, racing bosses or something. Uh, it's just, it's always going to be useful every fight. Even if they have a lot of um, spell-related heroes, it's still really effective. Um, if they have a lot of mages, it's still effective because some every hero in the game does ability does significant amount of damage with auto attacks. And then if they have a hero um, like a Volo or a Rainer or a Zul'jin or something, obviously Suppression Pulse is even better. Um, Illidan as well, Tracer, heroes like that that rely on auto attacks, it's going to be even, um, even stronger against those types of heroes. So... You might be thinking, well, I always go Purifier Beam, um, but you're just 
you, you will get more value, especially at higher levels from suppression pulse than you will purifier beam. I can pretty much promise you that. So level 13, we have Templar Zeal, Blade Dash's cooldown to reduce or cool Blade Dash cooldown recharges 100 percent faster while below 50% health. Triple tri triple strike increases twin blades number of basic attacks to three from two, and but increases the cooldown from four to five. Graviton Vortex, Phase Prism pulls and damages an additional nearby hero additional hero near the first, and its cooldown is reduced by six seconds. And phase bulwark when shield overload activates, gain 40 spell armor for four seconds, which basically reduces ability damage for four seconds by 40%. Okay, so Templar Zero is trash. Ignore it. So we have a few options here. The majority of the time you're gonna to want to go Graviton Vortex. So you might have never considered this talent, or you might be always being this talent already. But this talent is good for two reasons. Uh, the first reason is it reduces the cooldown of grav of phase prism from 16 seconds to 10 seconds. And you don't have to hit a hero for it to, to get value out of this. It's just going to flat reduce the cooldown. So even if you're only swapping one person, um, or even if you miss, it reduces the cooldown by six seconds. It's just permanently reduced. And that's really, really powerful considering phase prism is basically your most important ability um, and has the most impact. The second thing is that it swaps an additional hero near the first. So this, the wording might be a little bit confusing, but it doesn't, you don't have to hit the other hero with phase prism you just hit a hero right a normal hero as you would and then if a hero is nearby that hero so about let's see if i'm swapping this hero and if there's someone around in this area it automatically pulls them with the first hero hit so if you hit um, a tank and there's a vala right behind the tank it'll swap both those heroes and if you get if you get a swap on like a medic vala on their back line you instantly win the fight if you can swap both of those heroes into the middle of your team um, so basically it gives you a win condition at all points in the game to instantly win a team fight at any time. And it puts a huge amount of threat on the enemy team. This is probably his single best talent. Um, even better than his ultimate uh, almost at some points. Because this is a 10, it, it makes Phase Prism a 10 second cooldown that you instantly win a fight at any time. Um, so let me actually see if I can show you guys uh, what this looks like. So again, it's not piercing. You just have to hit a hero and it also put um, hits a nearby hero. So if I turn on Vikings here, it might be able to show you. Let's see where they are. There. So you can see that the other hero, even though I didn't hit them, it also swaps um, Olaf, who's nearby. And it also slows them, since I have this slow talent at 7. So you can see that Eric is not near Olaf. It's not, it's not going to pierce him, but it also hits Eric. So it's a very, very strong... Um, talent that I recommend you try if you haven't tried. Okay, Vikings are bugged. They're just going to spawn. <laughs> um, okay, so the other talents you have here are Face Bulwark, which is really strong if they have a lot of ability damage. Just think um, Spell Shield, basically the same thing. And if they have a lot of ability damage, you probably want to go space, um, Face spell work, or face Bulwark instead of Graviton Vortex. If they have a lot of tanks, you want to go Triple Strike because we have a talent at level 16 that is really, really good with that. So if they have a lot of tanks, you go Triple Strike. If they have a lot of uh, mages, go face bulwark. And if you just want to, in all other situations, or if you just want to get really good pulls, uh, go graviton vortex. At level 16, we have zealot charge, titan killer, sonic wound, and plasma burn. Zealot charge doubles the distance for charge by so by 100%, which is double obviously. Um, so you can see the normal charge distance. And if I get zealot charge, it doubles that, so significantly further. Um, it actually gives you a real charge. And you can see here, you can kind of walk away while using your W. So this gives you, this makes it a lot easier to charge heroes that um, might be at a distance, uh, but this isn't always the, 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 the ability you want to take. So the way I look at it is, so if we look at Sonic Wound here, Twin Blade, Final Strike lowers a hero's armor by 25, 25 for two seconds, which basically makes them take 25% more damage. So the way I look at it is, I'm never going to be engaging with my W. Um, I mean, sometimes I might, but most of the time I'm looking for a swap. So I'm trying to, I'm like scouting around and it's like, oh, I think I see someone. I'm going to swap them. I'm going to swap them into my team. So I don't need that extra, the extra range because I'm using the range from phase prism to initiate fights. I'm not using the, the range from zealot charge. And what, once I've swapped them, I don't need the extra range visibility. So if you swap them and then you use sonic wound, you're going to be able to make them vulnerable for your whole team to burn them down. So don't think about it as you charge into a fight with W. You want to you start a fight with Phase Prism if possible. And once you get um, 
the, ha the hang of using phase prism, you should be able to do it very, very reliably because it's not too hard to do. Uh, Titan Killer causes Twin Blades to do 2.5% um, of the target's max health per hit. So if we look at Triple Strike, you can do 7.5% of the target's max health every 5 seconds um, in addition to the damage you'd already be doing. So this is extremely strong versus tanks. Um, if you go this build. So if they have multiple tanks, like two, three tanks in their team, I would definitely recommend going Titan Killer. And so Sion Queen is the standard that I would go. And Plasma Burn is just, although it does more than twice the amount of damage as Burning Rage, your shield is just not going to be active a lot of time. It usually just gets instantly destroyed um, because it doesn't actually shield that much health. It usually gets burned pretty quickly. Uh, at level 20, Artanis actually has a lot of viable talents here. So if you go... Suppression Pulse, you're going to want to go Orbital Bombardment um, most of the time. Um, if you have no CC on your team at all and you're having time sticking to targets, you want to go Nexus Blades. If um, the enemy team is a lot of, has a lot of mages, uh, you want to go Force of Will. And if you did, for whatever reason, go Purifier Beam, I actually think that Target Purified is really, really strong. So if you swap a target um, and then you Purifier Beam... Um, so let me, let me actually show you guys really, really quick. Because I know this video is already going on quite long. So if I, I am intrigued. So if I swap a target here, then they're going to be slowed. And then I can jump to them, cast Purify Beam, and then they won't be able to run away because they're slowed by um, the level 7 talent. And after you get a kill, say this is like a Vol or something, the beam will refresh and you just go on the next target. And you do considerable single target damage, whether you go Titan Killer or you go Sonic Wound, you'll do a lot of damage and you can actually get a lot of resets. I think this is a really strong talent, especially in like Quick Match or your League. Again, I would recommend just going Suppression Pulse and going Orbital Bombardment, but if for some reason you did go Purifier Beam, I think that Target Purified is actually a really strong talent. Um, again, every level 20 is actually viable for Artanis. He's one of the very few heroes that have uh, viable talents at pretty much every or at level 20. For all, all these talents are viable. Um, but most heroes don't. So, what do I think of Artanis overall? He's really good. <laughs> He's a really good hero. Um, I'd expect nerfs. Maybe he'll be a little bit squishier in the future. Um, his, if you want to be a good Artanis player, you need to learn how to swap. And it's not too hard. But if you never even thought about playing Artanis, it, it's a little bit of a learning curve. And... He's not, outside of swapping, he isn't too hard to play. You pretty much just attack the nearest target with Twin Blades and use Suppression Pulse when needed. Um, so just get the hang of using Phase Prism and you should be good. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. And until next time, I will see you then.